Well, welcome back to the Daily Combat Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Stockbridge, and my co-host, co-breather of air, co-wearer of clothes, isn't here today. Matt Hollywood Matt Connolly is away in Queensland doing amazing things, and so we wish him all the very best whilst he's up there with Ryan Blue Bowen, and look forward to having him back on the podcast next week. But our guest today is Louis the Junkyard Dog Passon. So uh, welcome to the podcast, Louis. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So uh, the Junkyard Dog. How did, how did all that come about? Uh, Ike. Ike gave me that name. So. Craig Ike from yeah. Cardio Flex. Yeah. Yep. Craig Ike, coach. So uh, is, is, there, is there a ceremony involved or you just turn up on the on the night and on fight night, the, the ring announcer comes out with it? Is that pretty much how it is? Yeah, uh, pretty much, yeah. Just um, he, we don't, none of us get to pick our own fight names, so... Um, that, what, that's yeah, one thing you can't do. That's one thing you can't do. So <laughs> even if we had a preference or what we wanted to be called, Nah, he's got to pick it. and um, See, that that's like on the podcast, I wanted to go with Big Sexy and just nobody else was really up for the idea. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so mate, you, you've, been, um, you've been fighting now for a little while and you've garnered quite the, the reputation, um, much as the nickname would suggest. And uh, But you, you've had an interesting journey in mixed martial arts and, and from what I understand, what we're looking at today is just a, just a, a fragment of what you once were. You, you were yeah. quite, a, quite a heavy set young man and, and yeah. have gone through quite the physical transformation as part of your MMA development yeah yeah uh, that's right I started um first training oh, what was it, about four years ago now mm-hmm. and I walked into the gym at about 110 wow. kilo. Yeah. And, and what do you fight at just so uh, 70 kilos incredible a lightweight wow yeah did you start training with the ambition to be 70 kilos or is that just uh, something you started to work towards and ended up becoming the goal yeah um well, I never thought I would make 70. When I first walked in the gym, like, the, the goal was always to fight. I always wanted to fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was more looking at middleweight, like 83, 84. Um, but then the weight just started coming off as I was training and started getting down lower and lower. And then, um, yeah, I think I first had my first kickboxing fight at 76. Mm. And then I realised I could make 70 easy. Yeah. Yep. So um, so when you, when you first started fighting... What what brought you to MMA in the first place? Had you uh, had fight experience previous to that, or any kind of martial arts training before uh, stepping into an MMA gym? No, nah, not nothing really. Just yeah. maybe a couple uh, boxing fight, um, not boxing fight, boxing uh, classes here and there. Yeah, um, and that was about it. No, nah, nothing. Just mainly, I was just overweight, not happy. Yeah, I just wanted to do something, and then yeah, fighting come then. Had you always been a big kid? Yeah. I've right. Always, always been a big kid, but when I yeah, I would say yeah, always been a big kid. Wow, and uh, so so that was quite the the challenge for you in the first place, just getting fit enough to be able to step into a cage or into a ring, and and to work your way all the way down to seventy kilos is, is I mean, it's it's remarkable. It's absolutely amazing. It, were you always so disciplined um, previous to starting martial arts and and and? And fighting, or nah, it, nah, was that kind of came as a result of yeah, the starting yeah, the training? Starting the training, I, well, I knew if I wanted to step in there, I got to be serious and give everything to it. So that's when the dieting started, and you know, I mean, stop drinking alcohol, stop going out partying, stuff like that. So um, everything I, I do now is purely just for the fighting, and you know, I mean, to get the edge over the competition. Wow, and and so have you returned to any of those ways? Do, do you sneak in a drink every now and again? Uh, oh. will, you, will you hit the town occasionally? Are you able to control it when you do? Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't. To be honest, I don't like drinking, um, and I have like at a Christmas show or something like that. I, I have a couple, but I don't really have any more than a couple. I, I don't like the feeling of being drunk or anything like that. So yeah, and I think that's come from not not drinking for so long and not going out and partying. So yeah, I, I don't enjoy that lifestyle anymore. Hmm. It's interesting because now, now your all your priorities have shifted, and everything's about optimization and being yeah. being prepared and and ready in the cage. Um, and I guess you know when you've got that kind of focus, those other kind of peripheral things start to drop away. Did you notice like your social circle started to change as well as you became more disciplined? Yeah, yeah. I lost. Uh, I wouldn't say I lost a lot of friends. I still, I'd still call them friends. Yeah, but I don't see pretty much anyone anymore yeah um most people i see i I have a couple close friends i see still um but other than that it's just gym that's it yeah train gym well everyone's in different stages of their life as well yeah so it's hard to relate to a lot of people Mm. especially when you have a goal 
and where you want to get to. Yeah. It's very hard to relate to the norm. norm and, and what would you say your your goal is at the moment? Because you, you're achieving big things in the cage and one of Australia's well, most, uh, I guess, anticipated fighters at, your, in, at 70 kilos now. Yeah. And uh, every time you step in the cage, it's, it's excitement. So everybody wants to see your next fight. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, at, how, did, how did all of that come about? Not sure. Just keep rocking up and keep fighting. And then um, I guess the, the crowd follows. I, I feel like um, you just got to be entertaining, you know what I mean? And, and I'm an entertaining fighter. I can't just sit on the back foot and, and wait for someone to come to me. I, I'm going to come towards them and hunt them down and, and look for my opportunities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so w- w- when you um, when you think back to when you first uh, stepped into the gym, it, had you had any um, – uh, did you know anybody at the gym or was it you just straight off the street, walked in and just uh, suss it out? What, what – because I'd imagine that would yeah. be quite a nervous thing to do. Yeah. You, you, you know, if you're overweight and you're not sure and you don't have any, you know, friends or connection with the gym, just to kind of turn up is a particularly brave thing to do, not yeah. really knowing who's on the other side of that door. It, it, that would have been quite a confronting experience in itself. Yeah. I didn't actually know anyone coming into the local MMA scene before stepping into the gym. Mm. I only got to know of people through being in the gym environment and then going to Diamondback Fighting Championship shows. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so you've like been that. to a few of the shows before? No, nah, I, when I just started training, I ah. think two weeks later there was a show coming up, so yep. me and my brother decided to go and watch that. Yeah. And uh, when I first started training, I trained out of United MMA for the first 12 months, mm-hmm. and then that's when I made a transition to CardioFlex. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And when you're, you're in the gym now, you, you're certainly circulating with some of the uh, big up-and-coming stars of MMA in Australia. Um, who, who's kind of uh, uh, serving as some kind of inspiration for you at the moment around the gym? Oh, definitely. It's hard not to say Shane, Shane Mitchell. It's just if you look at his record and, and you look at what he's done, you know, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to have, mm. I think, what is he? 13 or 14 wins. Yeah. 12 finishes. Yeah. Like that's unbelievable. You don't you don't hear that every day. So yeah. he's definitely someone I look up to big but also everyone else in the gym. We got a young um a young guy named Cody Mayberry. Mhm. And um he's he's going to be something big and and he shows up every day. He's in the gym every day. Mm-hmm. He's one of my main training partners as well. And I look up to him as well. He hasn't had an MMA fight yet cuz he's only not not 18 yet. Yeah. But you wait wait till he has a fight and yeah. So the bookies are out there making notes now. Yeah. Maybery, okay, yeah. got that one down. Okay, good. No worries. Um, so, uh, so uh, any plans for your uh, for fighting? Um, anything upcoming on on the agenda? Coming, uh, yeah, I'm fighting at Apex, 25th of February. So uh, just locked that in. Okay, so this this, uh, this is a daily combat. Uh, exclusive here, I think. So, uh, we, do you know who you're fighting as yet? Uh, yes, I'm fighting. Uh, a lad named Brandon White, I believe. Brandon White. Yeah, out of um, Eagle MMA. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're fighting for the lightweight title. For so GFC. this is your chance to get your hands on a strap. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, the, so uh, so this is big news. Um, and uh, uh, and how's preparations going so far? Uh, great. Is, we're about three, four weeks into camp at the moment. Everything's good. Weight, weight's good. Um, feel good, no injuries, so everything's yeah. going good. It, it, what do you start weight wise at the beginning of a camp? Um, I started this camp at eighty two kilo. Okay. So um, yeah, that's where I normally fluctuate. Yeah. About eighty, eighty two, um, and yeah, slowly making my way down there now. Come down, weigh in at seventy, and and come fight night. Do you blow back out like some yeah. of these heavyweights do? Or how do you how do you go? Yeah, I put on about six kilo. Wow. Yeah. In that twenty four hour period after yeah. weighing. Yep. Uh, incredible. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, um, uh, what do you know about uh, what do you know about your opponent on uh, for Apex? I know. I'm pretty sure from what I've seen, he, he likes to strike. Mm-hmm. Good strike. He's had a few kickboxing fights, I believe. Um, I think he's just an all rounder as well. So same as me, I'm an all rounder. Yeah. So um, 
it's going to be good. It's, it sounds like it's going to be a, a massive match up. It's uh, so uh, so for, for fight fans that aren't familiar and don't know the Apex Sport Fest is well. If you want to be there in person, if you happen to be in Australia, you can buy tickets now on DiamondbackFC.com. Uh, get your tickets now uh, as they will sell out. There's no doubt. Um, and especially if you want a good spot in the grandstand, you want to get there nice and early in the evening. Um, this is an outdoor spectacular. It's a multi-sport um, event. So uh, you've got strongman, arm wrestling, uh, uh, rugby, modified yeah, yeah. rules for rugby, um, uh, a, a whole range of strength and combat sports on the day. Of course, it all culminates with the DFC card at the end of the day. And, and that's, of course, where you'll see the man across the table from me right now contesting for the lightweight title. Yep. Yeah. This is uh, exciting, exciting stuff, and so. Um, uh, but uh, you can also get the pay per view. So if you can't be here in Australia and you think, oh, you know what, I'm missing out, well, you can jump on and get the pay per view off of Fight TV. Yeah. So, um, uh, so there, there's a few belts up on on that night. I think we've got a light heavyweight belt, and I, I was actually uh, waiting for the news on what the second belt was going to be on the yeah. night. So this is this is news to me yeah, as well. No, so I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah so I've I've been saying it for probably. The last year, even though I haven't had that many fights in, since then, but I've always like wanted that belt. I, that was the main goal. I, I want it, I want this belt, so yeah. I'm going to come out there and, and give it my all. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, probably too early, any tactics or anything like that, and I guess there's still a lot to learn, a no, lot to go was, through. Yeah, I'll, I'll save that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll just watch some tape and figure them out and yeah. Yep. Go from there. Come up with a plan. Come up with a plan. And uh, and uh, on, uh, let's say uh, you do win. Um, obviously, ambitions go into bigger and uh, better things there thereafter. Um, and uh, and of course, um, uh, it all lies are on the UFC. And and as a young athlete, you know, do you, do you chart out your your course uh, accordingly, or are you just looking to do your best every every time you step out in the cage and whatever happens happens? Or is, or is there more of a strategic plan to your career? I uh, will. We'll see what happens after this fight. So um, it's going to be this one, and I want to have a couple more interstate. Um, just fight interstate, getting used to flying around and fly, um, fighting and just getting used to that environment. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go from there and then maybe look another 12 months, maybe look to go pro then. But to be honest, I'm not thinking about that just now. Yeah, I'll worry about the fights I got lined up and then we'll go from there. And you talk about travelling interstate and uh, you've had some experience travelling interstate already. Well, what are some of the lessons that you learned from doing that or things that uh, happened or uh, things that you felt that you weren't expecting as a result of travelling interstate for, for a fight? Yeah, um, I think because I, I got a nutritionist that hooks me up with all my weight cutting and stuff. Yep. And the biggest thing was finding a supermarket and just not knowing where anything is. Yeah. That was the hardest thing to adapt to. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you water cut, you're not doing it in a bath, you've got to do it in a sauna. Mm. Um, or if you, because you don't have a bath at the facility I was at, uh, stuff like that. So you just got to adapt mm. in the thing and not let anything, you know what I mean? I guess piss you off or anything. Just so stay calm. So in this case, in, in your previous um, experience of traveling interstate, you weren't quite familiar with the environment like what, what was going to be available and at your disposal so you could prepare for the fight so you went you, you may have assumed that these things were going to be readily available because you can find it here in Adelaide and you get yeah. to Melbourne and think oh well I can get it but it's like a 20k drive that way and I you know yeah, it's no, you don't have a car or anything so yeah you got to rely on a lot of people to get you around or you get cool but they were good over demolition fight series that they're, they're good guys and good family run promotion yeah. So they they were they helped heaps. That, that's awesome. So is um so you obviously we've fought in, uh, within uh, DFC and that's what, what, what the belt's going to be uh, uh, the organisation uh, who's the light heavyweight uh, sorry the the uh, lightweight belt that you're fighting for. But uh, you've also had that experience of fighting in demolition and yeah. and how was that? What was your experience there? And obviously it sounds like a positive one. Yeah, no, it was good. It w- it was good fight, and I fought um guy. Um, Harry Webb for mm-hmm. the, the lightweight title over there, and that mm-hmm. was after my big knockout of Sam at the Apex. Yeah, yeah. I'm yep. sure the promoter, um, the guy who owns Demolition, he was in the crowd and seen it, so he offered me the fight straight away after that. Off the strength of your performance at yep. at, at DFC. Yeah, he offered that to me, and and that was a, quite a brief performance from from memory as well. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a long fight, so I didn't learn heaps in that fight. Mm-hmm. Um. Obviously, the longer the fights go, the more you learn about yourself and, 
and the better you get. Um, so yeah, I didn't learn heaps about that fight. So I think that was yeah, that was my second fight mm-hmm. in MMA. Yeah, and then I fought Harry. I think he was on a five fight knockout streak or something. Wow! So it was a it was a big ask. It was a big ask. Did you feel like that was a big step up? It as was well. a big, it was a big step up. Uh, step up, but. You know, I'm still going to take it. I don't, I don't care. You know what I mean? And and I think I learned a lot about myself taking that fight. And I, and I learned where I was at. Yeah. So early in my career. Yeah. I knew what level I needed to get to and what I needed to improve on. So then when I come out and uh, fought my last fight, Seku, I wanted to prove to people that I'm not just a striker. I can grapple as well. Mm. And that was my main goal in that fight. Yeah, so it, it's um, it, there was some coaching from the commentary box. I I, I heard uh, <laughs> during the course of your last fight as well, and uh, and there seemed to be some kind of uh, talk about uh, stretching the fight out a little bit more yeah. um, because you you, you, you uh, previously you'd not spent that long in the yeah. octagon, and it and it's it's a it's a amazing process because you spend weeks in in preparation and training and and in camp, and then you you get to the event and you've got the lights the music the cameras are on you walk in and then how does it feel as the athlete when you walk in and it's literally 30 seconds later and you're walking back out and yeah, with no, your hands held high like it, th- is that surreal. a blur to you or it, wa- it was a big blur to me and i had to pinch myself a couple of times because it was so it was so quick and i was just to be honest i didn't i wasn't expecting it i just let my hands go and then and yeah i wasn't really thinking to be honest yeah i just let my hands go and i, I do what I do on the pads and what on the bag and just let them fly and, and then, yeah. So it's quite instinctual. So you didn't go into that necessarily that fight with the ambition of ending it so quickly. It was it was just the adrenaline's going, the lights are on, the bell's gone and uh, you're just letting the hands do whatever the hands have been trained to do. Well, that's the thing, yeah. So I seen, um, I threw a couple shots on the way in and I noticed that his um, back hit the cage and, and we did we did kind of plan for this. Um, to a degree, and I, I knew he's going to walk himself into the cage, and and I know once I get you with your back against the cage, it's hard to get me off you. Mm. And it's just what I how I train and and how I come forward. So I knew it, I didn't think it was gonna he was going to walk straight into the cage. Like I knew he was going to, but I didn't think he would he would just sit there. Mm. I thought he would circle. But then I just kept the pressure on, and then got got the finish. So it was good. So it, as you were starting to, it, it I guess. Uh, ease yourself into the MMA world and you're getting yourself into shape. Were there any big names that you kind of looked at as being examples or people that you already followed that you thought, yeah, look, I, I want to be a bit like that. That's my style, I think. And anybody like that that comes to mind? Uh, are you talking about more like a professional prof- fighter? Yeah. 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 Um, I do I do like following like Justin Gaethje. Um, and I do like Chandler. Well, now it all makes sense. Okay. Yeah, Justin yeah. Gaethje. <laughs> and I do like lately... Um, Michael Chandler's been oh been, yeah being just because of how hard he comes out and he, and he's always on the front foot and he's entertaining everyone loves him now yeah yeah I mean um and yeah so Justin Gaethje and uh, Michael Chandler definitely yeah that, it's it's interesting especially when you say Justin Gaethje and and all of a sudden it clicked for me because that, that's it's very very similar very aggressive moving forward quick hands and and heavy hands as well when when something lands it lands seriously. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting you can see those yeah. comparisons. Uh, 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 yeah, I definitely look up to him, but then it's hard not to look up to the local guys as well. Um, what are some of the unknown local names that kind of come, for most people, but that come to mind for you as inspiration? Uh, I'm talking more probably still like big names. Okay. Like Volk. Oh, like yes. Definitely yep. Volk, Whitaker, um, Jimmy Crew, all yep. those guys that are, that are killing it in the big scenes as well. Um, local guys, I've definitely I've I've been loving like Vanilla Gorilla. If yeah, you, if you've been watching his <laughs> fights the last couple of fights, yeah, it's just something's flicked a switch in him, and he's so composed and calm. Yeah, and he just he looks like a full professional, and he's still an amateur. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's definitely another guy I look up to a lot. It's one of the, the the thrills of being able to see fighters develop from maybe their first or second fights, and as, as they start to go forward. But there seems to be, like, say, that a, 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 the the switch gets flipped, or yep. or there's a, a a moment where it all changes and things start to lock in and, and make a lot of sense for that fighter. And yep. it's almost like they find themselves in the cage at that point. Maybe the the adrenaline isn't there as much. There's a familiarity with the environment. Um, 
I don't know, but it, there's definitely moments where all of a sudden you can see a fighter come alive yeah. and uh, they become something else. Yeah. Have you felt that happen for yourself as yet? I'd, yeah, definitely, because uh, my first kickboxing fight that I had, uh, so, I, yeah, first kickboxing fight I was against Tavita and um, he was really composed and stuff and I'd just come out just trying to throw bombs yeah. and pretty much gas myself out and I got a second win in the last round and, and I did really well, but... I didn't want that to happen again. I didn't want to feel that gassed in a fight that I feel like I couldn't move. Yeah. Um, so then when I fought Mark, I was definitely a lot more reserved and I was a lot more patient mm. instead of just going out there trying to go for the kill. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of amateurs and young fighters get wrong for their first couple of fights is they're so frenetic and they just go balls to the wall. You know what I mean? Straight away. Yeah. Where you have to stay calm and composed because if you can't get them out in that first couple of minutes, then you're stuck in there for another two rounds. You yeah. I mean? Doesn't happen much for you, but the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, recently you became a, a signing for American Motors. Yes, um, yes. So uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about. Yeah. Um, that was after the, that f- uh, second Apex as well. Mm-hmm. So they seen the fire and um, I was just strolling on Facebook I reckon it was after um, Ike put up the post on Cardioflex page of the finish Mm -hmm. and uh, they commented underneath, someone needs to sponsor this kid. (laughs) And then, yeah, we got into talks after that. Incredible. Yeah, that was good. And and what's it like being a brand ambassador now? You've got to say good things about the cars and all of that type of thing. No, they're they're good guys. They're good guys down there. They've got a great team and um, they got some of the best cars in Australia, if not the world, like some of their cars are unbelievable. It is pretty insane when you jump on their Instagram page and see what's going on down there. So, because yeah. they've got like a, the, the the big Dodge Ram trucks and the the Hellcats yeah. and the, uh, the the Chargers, and uh, they they really specialise in that exotic American yeah American motor. new stuff. They got uh, motorbikes as well. Oh, do they really? Yeah, yeah. yeah they got a lot of Harley's and mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and they um also have like those big american trucks like the big rams yeah yeah oh man they're killer they're insane aren't they yeah insane (laughs) and and so uh, i mean that that's pretty cool to to be associated with a company like that so early on in your career yeah i was not expecting it at all but um uh nick and alex they get behind the young guys that that they they don't so nick and alex are the guys from america yeah they're the owners of the american motors they don't necessarily you know i mean they want someone who's starting from the bottom yeah, they want to be there and work their way up. You know, what I mean, they want they want to say they were with them from day one. Yeah, and um, that's the goal. So that's got awesome. Them, got them on board and got a couple other good sponsors as well. And oh, who are they? Um, I got my old man sponsoring me. Oh yeah, Triple really? M Agronomy. So um, what's it, what's dad's business? Um, Triple M Agronomy. So he's an agronomist. What, what's an agronomist? Um, Am okay. I even saying that right? I don't. No, I didn't know that was a word until you said it. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, agronomist. Agronomist. What, yeah, what does an agronomist um, do? So he f- drives around, flies around the country, goes um, farm to farm, a lot of uh, fruit and veg growers. Yeah. And um, just helps them get their business. Um, like I'd say. Oh, like, like an economist, a, but for agriculture. Yeah, for agriculture. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, so he very goes, interesting. So, like, he looks at what they're spraying and all their fertilizers, and and just see if they haven't la- like he tests the soil and then comes back, sends it to the lab, reads the soil reports, and then gives them a plan to go from there. So it kind of works out, you know, what what they should be spending money on, what yeah. what you know, not that stuff, or pull back on that, and that. What what an issue. So literally flying around talking to farmers about how to become more profitable and uh, yeah. and have less waste and and ultimately have more a better business. Yeah. Wow, and and what's what's the name of Dad's business? Uh, Triple M Agronomy. Triple M Agronomy. Yeah. So, uh, well, if you happen to be a farmer, now you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hit him up. Hit him up, Hit him up. Yeah. and he's happy to fly around the country. So yeah, uh, yeah. he's in Perth at the moment. So right. Yeah. What what an interesting role. I'd, I'd never heard of that before, but of course it makes complete sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so he he goes for a lot of the farmers he goes see is on big scale. So like mm. you know, I mean, thousand acres or if not more. Wow. Know. So yeah, he so, after. so he's a little bit like Ike, but for farmers. So he's training yeah. farmers how to be yeah, better. Pretty much, yeah, that's incredible. So uh, so we've got uh, Dad on board, uh, and who else? Um, I got um, no more nudie windows in um, uh, Melbourne. Yeah, just a family friend, right? Uh, Mother Farms. Yeah. Um, 
And wh- what do these businesses do? Um, so No More New Windows is a business who does blinds and roll, like, um, yeah, mainly blinds. R- blinds, roller shutters, yeah, uh, so uh, all of that type of thing. Window yeah, yeah. furnishings for yes. residential and commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah both, right. Both. Wow. Yeah. And uh, and um, so if you're in Melbourne, yeah, and well. we've got listeners all, all around the country, so if you're in Melbourne, yeah, these are the guys to go and see. Yeah. And support those businesses that are supporting people like Louie who are, who are doing great things in the cage. So if you do do love MMA and you want to get behind these businesses, it's really easy. I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely out there. Yeah. Um, and sorry, uh, who was the other? I got Muzzo Farms, uh, another um, like family-owned like, uh, owned business down in um, Virginia, uh, Gold River area. Yeah. Um, I think they have a couple farms. Other oh, than yeah, they do. Yes. Yep. 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 Um, I've got Build Training, who's just jumped on board, so help me with a bit of my conditioning. So what, what are they? So they, they focus on athletes' conditioning or just, yeah, I would yeah, say, they, anybody that's looking yeah, to get a better shape? they got a gym in Gawler and it's um, fully decked out. So it's, it's almost like a CrossFit type of setup gym, mm-hmm. um, but it's got, um, how do I explain it? But it's like set run classes. Uh-huh. It's yeah. very, very good, very good. Right, so like a little bit like if is F forty five a little bit along yeah, those lines. It's so similar, it's like but it's more of like a, a yeah family run business then. Yeah, it's not the big brand. This no. is uh, locals doing it for yeah. locals. Yeah. Uh, amazing. And, uh, and anybody else? And I got uh, brick. There's work. more. Yeah, <laughs> I got um, brickwork quality meats, which they've um, unfortunately now that's the sponsor that every that, fighter should the, have. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they help me out with my meat supplier. Uh, so and just I'm, bring a truck around every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they hook me up with my meat and stuff. But they actually just shut up shop at the brickworks, and, mm-hmm. and now they're looking to go somewhere else. Yeah. So we, when they reemerge, we'll we'll let you know if they're still brickworks. Um, brickworks meats was it? Brick, yeah, brickwork quality meats. Brickwork quality meats. If they're still brickwork quality meats uh, after this podcast, uh, well, great. You know, definitely Google them, check them out. If not, we'll come back to you with an update once they've uh, found a new location. Because yeah, yeah. we, we need the protein into this man. So yeah, uh, that's down, that. Go, I think they're looking down north. Oh yeah, so, excellent. Yeah, that'd be good for me. Yeah, and um, also got Redenti Farms as well. Redenti Farms, another family. Um, and they're pretty much like my family. Yeah, I, I count them as like my uncles. I've known them that long. So wow. So another agri agri business. Group, yeah. yeah, yeah, mate. I mean, that's a that's quite the trove of um uh of sponsors and and uh, and people willing to get behind you. I mean, it, it's uh it's not something that we find here on the podcast often that uh, uh, an uh, an athlete uh, an amateur athlete in particular would have so much attention. So it's a uh, uh, obviously there's it's not just Ike that's seeing a lot of potential in you it's uh there's a whole yeah, a of community of friends. people out there that are really getting behind yeah yeah it's good I, I'm very blessed to have these guys especially as an amateur you know I mean I didn't I didn't expect any sponsors and then they've approached me a lot of these guys have approached me yeah and um so it just shows you the type of people they are so are you going to have to put on like uh, go up a couple of weight categories just to get bigger shirts so you can put more sponsors <laughs> on them or <laughs> <laughs> I might have to get a new shirt made and strategically put all these. And you got the junkyard dog merch now as well. I, yeah, I noticed yeah. here. So, uh, so can people buy a shirt like that? Yeah, I got I've got them stored at the gym. Okay, yeah. so they can reach out to you on Instagram. Yeah, or reach out or come into the gym and come and to Cardio Flex and I'll hook you up. So yeah, nice. So you, you can you can you can represent yeah. the junkyard dog. It's very cool, by the way. Uh, cheers, um, <laughs> Ike's brother-in-law. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, got this made. Wow. So he did the designing for the for everything on this. So incredible. So he did it all by hand, and then yeah. And then they've transposed yeah, it and yeah. made a digital. Yeah. Uh, so it could print. I'm Amazing. Pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did it off of a uh, iPad or something. Huh. Unbelievable. Eh? So this is a uh, all authentic junkyard dog. Yeah. Wow. So did well. Uh, it was um. It was interesting for me uh, the first time that uh, I, I saw your name. I saw Lewis, and uh, I was quickly I was quickly corrected. It was Louis, not not Lewis. And yeah. my, my yeah. grandfather was a Lewis as well. Yeah. And he would often call himself Louis to to other people when he introduced himself. And I was like, oh, hang on, like your pop, Louis. Oh, hang on, it's Lewis. I I, I, I couldn't go, but always been Louis to the family and friends. Is that yeah. how it's been? To be honest, they call me whatever. So, <laughs> so it's, an, 
<laughs> half of them call me Louis. The other half call Louis. Yeah. All my friends call me Louis. Yeah. Um, I just would go with Louis. So you go with Louis. That's yeah. the brand now, isn't it? That's, That's the brand. Now. That is, yeah. And and well, and once you've heard it once, there's only one Louis, isn't there? Really, yeah. in the in the combat sports world, as far as I'm, I can think. Um. Yeah. Only one Louis. I think there's might be another Louis, but I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can think of anyone off the top of my head. Which is great for your sponsors, great for branding, because yeah. you know once people hear that, they instantly they they've got your recall. So uh, yeah. it w- works works well for everybody. Um, so, uh, but uh, obviously, always room for more sponsors. And uh, as, a, as as your career develops and uh, more opportunities present, not just in Australia but overseas, that it's not a uh, it's not a cheap thing to do to travel and pursue your dreams as you are at the moment. So it's a uh, yeah. it's one of those things that the more sponsors, the better. Um, there's a big future ahead and uh, lots to look forward to. Yes, and, sure. and of course, with um, uh, the upcoming bout at the 25th of February at Apex Sport Fest, um, there's uh, lots to look forward to. So if people want to see you in person and in the cage, um, that's the best opportunity that they can get to. And if they want a signed version of this shirt, I'm sure that they'll be able to source one on the day as well. Yeah, I, I don't know if, you, if they'll like my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give them the signature, mate. Yeah, They'll yeah. just keep it, put it aside for when you're rich and famous, and they can, yeah, t- yeah sell it on eBay. So, uh, so mate, um, uh, so yeah, big fight coming up. First title fight for you, um, as well. Uh, second, a second so, title fight. Yeah, oh, when well, you went to demolition, that yeah, was also a title that, fight. That was a title fight as well. So yeah, this is my second title shot, um, and so I'm very blessed to have the second shot. Yeah, to go for a belt. That's why this one, I'm coming in really hungry for it because I lost the first one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not losing this one. Did I mean you're always a you're always a puncher chance when you get in the ring, but you knew you were up against a pretty formidable opponent uh, in Melbourne at yeah. Demolition last time. Uh, so did you go into that fight with expectations of winning or using it as a learning experience? No, I always go out thinking I'm going to win. Yeah, um, I always back myself. And, and and to be honest, if I fight him tomorrow, I still think I could win. Yeah, you know what I mean, I just he was one step ahead of me in that fight, and yeah. And then I copped a, a nasty liver shot that just unfortunately put me down. Yeah. And um, couldn't couldn't recover quick enough. Yeah. So there you have it, demolition. We, we, we've uh, we, I think we've got a, a, a match up here. Uh, he's so. pro, he just turned pro. So oh, did he? So yeah, he's happened. vacated the belt. Yeah, he's vacated the belt. So, but I'll, I'll I'll meet him in the pros one day. Yeah. You know, I'm sure. Once I decide to go pro, and then eventually we'll cross paths again. Hopefully. The rematch is coming up. It's out there. One it's day, destined. It's in the future. Yeah. So, uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, do do yourselves a favour. Get behind this young man. Uh, big, big fight coming up at the 25th of February. It's at Apex Sport Fest, of course. Get your tickets now. You can do so by going on to diamondbackfc.com. Of course, you can secure the pay-per-view. But it, if you want to get yourself cage side, there's VIP tickets still remaining for the, uh, for the DFC card. Otherwise, general admission will still get you a great spot in the grandstands and, and pretty close. Uh, to the fighters as well so um and of course the fighters will be there during the course of the day so um if you've seen louis you love him and uh he's all of a sudden your new favorite which i'd imagine he would be then head on over say good day and uh, the athletes are there of course to introduce themselves to the fans and uh and to uh, make you feel very very welcome at the event so uh, uh louis wishing you all the very best of luck uh, with uh, with the upcoming bout and um i'm, I'm sure uh we'll, we'll be having you back in here very very soon with a strap across your shoulder yeah, that's the plan Ladies and gentlemen, Louis the Junkyard Dog Passing. Thanks. No worries at all. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us on the Daily Combat Podcast and we'll look forward to bringing you a whole lot more with Hollywood Matt Connolly next time.